To help calculate omega, we can define a value df, which will be the number of hertz between each of the DFT calculations that we're going to perform. So in this case, df will be equal to f end minus f start divided by, and I'm going to take the number of frequencies minus 1. Having a minus 1 in the denominator ensures that the spectrum will be plotted all the way up to f end, since the first frequency at which we calculate the DFT is f start. And then this is what I use to create the omega array. I have a loop for f equals 1 to the number of frequencies, f n f r e q, and I write omega at frequency f is 2 times pi times f start. So we'll start with the first value here will be f start, and now we need to add on to that another 2 times pi times df for every new frequency as we go up. So I'm going to take f minus 1 here so that the first omega value corresponds to f start. And then we can end the loop. If you wrote your loop differently, that's fine as long as it produces the correct values. Something else we should do in the first part of the code is define the arrays to hold the results. We want to be able to calculate the magnitude of the spectrum. And in order to do this, we can save the real part and the imaginary parts of the summation. Here's the real, here's the imaginary part separately. And then we can calculate the magnitude using, by taking the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So let's define two arrays to store the real and the imaginary parts of our calculation. We need to store the real and imaginary parts at each frequency of interest. We could call these arrays something like FTR for Fourier transform, the real part, and FTI for the imaginary part of the Fourier transform. And each of these arrays need to store n frequency numbers since we need to perform the summation at each frequency of interest. So I'm going to say this is equal to zeros, n, f, r, e, q, and it's just a one-dimensional array. And we'll have the same thing for the imaginary part. And to create an array to store the magnitude of the spectrum, after we calculate it, we can say, maybe just call it mag for magnitude, and that would be also the same size. We could also calculate the phase, but that's not something we need right now in order to determine dx, so we can skip that part. And lastly, so that we can also plot the time waveform that we're taking the DFT of, let's also store the source waveform in an array. So maybe call this time waveform. And what are the dimensions of this one? This is not n frequency, it's our time waveform, so we're going to say it's n max in size and it's one dimensional. Take a minute now and write down as much as you can about how you plan to implement the second part of the code where the, we actually perform the DFT calculation.